Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of I know, I, I don't know why. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Hi, my name is Candace. <laughs> welcome back to another episode of What's My Book Reviews. Um, I am your host. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> um, I really appreciate you joining me for another episode. Um, in today's video, we are going, it's the end of an era. It's the end of the world as we know it. Okay. Um, in today's episode, we are going to be reviewing the last book. It's the last book, but not really, because there's another series that's kind of like a runoff series. So we're still going to see the characters, but it's going to be like 18 books. I mean, 18 books, dear God, 18 books. Oh my God. How does one make a mistake, realize they did it, heckle themselves, start over, repeat the same mistake? <laughs> Only Candace. Okay. 18 years later, that's what I meant to say. We're going to see the same characters, but 18 years later because the runoff series is about their children. Okay? Next gen. All right. Um, however, in today's video, we're going to be reviewing the last book in Sophie Lark's Brutal Birthright series with a heavy crown. And this is Sebastian Gallo's story. My baby Seb is all grown up and no longer a baby. And he's tying up bitches in his basement and having full-blown dungeon sex. Yes. I know what you're thinking. You're on the edge of your seat, and yes, we're gonna get into it because this boy done lost his mind. He done lost it, y'all. He got betrayed, and then he lost his mind, okay? So, this book, like all the books in the series, are free to read with Kindle Unlimited. If you don't know what KU is, I explain it in every video. Go watch one of my other videos. Oh, look, I plugged myself and saved myself time. Two birds, one stone. Okay. Um, allegedly, ho oh, oh, ho, here we go. Amazon, you about to get played. You about to get played. Allegedly, according to Amazon, this book has 424 pages. My copy has, and I'm not even gonna count this page with Sophie's love lark on it. Um, I love that, I love that lark. You know what, mm, I have something in the works that I'm working on that I may tell you about, but you're gonna have to wait until the bloopers and then I'll tell you because I want you to watch the whole video. <laughs> Blackmail. Um, so according to this, um, there are 406 pages. You promised me 424 pages. So you cheated me out of 18 pages. And look at that math. Am I a genius? Should I, should I submit my application to Mensa? No. Denied. Stamp. Denied. Um, 18 pages. Cheats. Amazon cheats. Cheats. Um, by the way, this copy that I'm holding, this beautiful, oh God, I love him. I love this cover model, by the way. He is so fucking gorgeous. Like, God, boy, I could literally look at you all day. This co this copy, by the way, is um, one of the ones that Sophie sent me that's signed. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, so, yes, so um, 406 pages lying Amazon bastards. Um, this book is free to read with KU. You can get it for your Kindle for the price of $4.99, which is a fucking bargain. You can get the paperback that I have right here, the trade paperback for $14.99, which is the same price as all the other trade paperbacks in this series. I don't know how much that equals up to be. There are six books in this series. That's only $60. That's only $60 and they're all free with Prime membership, free shipping. Come on, y'all. I know y'all played, y'all have paid more for trade paperbacks. And these books 
are so good. They're so good. They're phenomenal. They're so, they're so good. Okay. Um, so, I give you the deets. I'm going to read you the blurb. And then we're going to break it down because this book, there's so much. So much happened in this book, y'all. I'm going to do my best. I finished it. Um, maybe like a week ago. And of course I procrastinated in doing the review, which I know I shouldn't. And you guys know I shouldn't because every hour, and I won't say every day because it literally is every hour, every hour that I procrastinate doing the review, the plot is literally leaking from my ears. So I'm going to do my best. Well, we'll see what happens because you know me. All right. So, a temptation I couldn't resist. Da, 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 da. I saw her being stuffed in a trunk. Yelena Yenina, only daughter of the most vicious Bratva boss in Chicago. The Bratva hate my family. They burned my uncle alive. I should have left Yelena to her fate. But she fought like a Valkyrie, gorgeous, ferocious, and unbreakable. I saved her so I could make her mine. She says she'll never submit to a man. I guess we'll see. I'll push her to the limit and far beyond. Very short blurb. Um, it does not give much, if anything, away. Which is fine, because we're gonna... I have. <laughs> Whatever the blurb is lacking. Trust me. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you, okay? <laughs> because I needed all of these notes. Because again, you know me. All right, so where, where should we begin? The two main characters for this um, book are Yelena, and yes, that is spelled Yelena with a Y. Um, I have heard Russian um, Yelena's being pronounced Elena, even though it starts with a Y, but no, it is pronounced with a Y, Yelena. Um, and Sebastian, Sebastian Gallo. The Gallos are the Italian mob family of Chicago. Okay. Ada is the youngest Gallo. Sebastian is the youngest male Gallo. He's the youngest boy. Um, aside from Ada, who's a girl and the baby of the family, Sebastian was um, the least involved in his family's nefarious and illegal shady dealings. From the time that he was in high school and probably even younger than that, he was obsessed with basketball. He went to college on like a basketball scholarship type situation. He wanted to go pro and play basketball professionally. He um, was really into it, like pushed himself to the limit, training, um, dieting, exercising, that, like, all of that. He was super serious about basketball. Um, he didn't really want anything to do with his family's illegal activity. And his, the rest of his family was fine with that. Everyone just assumed that Dante, being the oldest, would take over his father's, like, take up the mantle of the gallo, the gallo, um, well, the book is called Heavy Crown, so the Gala Crown, basically. Um, so, right as of the first book in this series, um, Brutal Prince, that was Ada's book. Even though she was the youngest sibling, um, her book was the first. If you remember, and you have read, you have read the series, you will remember that e even that first that first book, Sebastian had. Um, a thing where there was a big kerfuffle and in a fight Sebastian was beat up pretty badly by um, what would be Ada's future husband's bodyguard. Um, Sebastian's knee was pretty much mangled. He went through a whole bunch of very rigorous physical therapy, um, a whole, a whole, like a whole bunch of exercises and, and treatments and things to try and get his knee 
back in shape so that he could play basketball again in an effort to become, to get back to that place and to be as healthy and strong as he could be. He also packed on 30 pounds worth of muscle uh, because he was, because he was a basketball player, he was very lean, very tall. He's humongous. He's like six foot six. He's big. Um, and unfortunately his knee did recover and is fully functional but he never gained back the speed and agility that he had on the court before his beatdown. So his basketball career was kaput. Um, that kind of put him into like a little spiral. Not a full on spiral like alcohol, drugs, that kind of thing, but slight depression um, what am I doing with my life? Introspection. Um, he's, he's lost. He doesn't know, he doesn't know what he's doing. Like, where do I go from here? Basketball was everything to me. If I don't have basketball, who am I? That kind of thing. Um, one night he's out, he's out having dinner with his family and Afterwards, he skips out early because he's just, he's just not in the mood. He can't. He doesn't mind. He loves his family, but at the same time, he resents his family because he sees everybody else is happy and moved on with their lives. And he resents the fact that a lot of them are the reason that he is stuck in kind of like a stasis. Um because of their lifestyle and because of all of the shit that they got him into uh, with his knee being fucked up and Ada, Ada's husband and, and all of that. Um, he kind of has like a little bit, a little seed of resentment. So he, he skips out of dinner early and he, he leaves and he's walking down the street and he hears um, like a commotion like down an alleyway. He looks down there and he sees a woman, what appears to be a woman being stuffed, attempting to be stuffed into a trunk of a car by a big dude. Uh, at first he's like, it's not really my problem. I don't wanna be bothered. And then he sees the woman and she's a she's a big blonde knockout. And I don't, I don't think it was that shallow for him. I think he would have helped her either way because he's a good guy. And he's like, uh, okay, well, I can't, I can't just let her get kidnapped. Like that's, that's not me. So he, he goes down there and he, even though he doesn't have nearly the amount of, um, killer instinct that the rest of his family does, he takes this guy on and he beats his ass basically. Um, he helps, he helps the girl out of the trunk and they have like a little back and forth banter and she, uh, he asks her who she is and she says her name is Yelena and he finds out that she's the daughter of the new head of the Bratva, the Russian mafia in Chicago. So the, the Russian mafia has, the mantle of the Russian mafia has changed hands like I change underwear, like it, it every day. Literally, every day, there's a new Bratva boss. I was getting ready to say like every other day and then I thought to myself, no, Candace, you don't want to give these people the impression that you don't change your underwear every day. <laughs> I do. I shower every day. I'm, I'm not a fucking hillbilly. Um, so, <laughs> the, uh, there is a kind of, the current ma the current mafia boss uh, of the Bratva is uh, his name is Alexei Yenin. That's Yelena's father. He holds true to this type of folklore that surrounds um, a stone called the Winter Diamond. If you will remember from Nero's book Savage Lover, the Winter Diamond was a gigantic. Uh, diamond that was uh, being housed in a safety deposit box 
in a bank that Nero robbed. <laughs> Nero stole the diamond. It belonged to the Bratva leader at that time. Um, what the hell is his name? Kolia Kristoff. Um, he stole the diamond. Kristoff got killed. He got off. Um, Nero stole the diamond and they sold it to fund their South River project, their construction project um, down by the river that they are doing in conjunction with the, the Griffins. Um, so, so Alexei Yenin believes that this winter diamond kind of has like a curse on it and that any Bratva boss that has the diamond will have kind of like good luck. But if he loses the diamond, he's cursed and he'll get offed or he, or his, his reign will be over. He holds resentment towards the gallows specifically for stealing the winter diamond. Nero and the other gallows believe that um, Kolia Kristoff hid the diamond in the, in the vault of the bank without telling any of the other Russians and that they didn't know it was there. Um, they do not know that Alexei knew it was there. Um, so to their knowledge, um, the Russians have no idea that Nero stole the diamond and subsequently sold it to fund their ventures. Um, however, Alexei knows that they did that and now he's hell bent on revenge against the gallows for stealing what he considers to be a piece of Russian history that really belongs to him. Uh, so, Sebastian saves Elena from this kidnapping. He finds out who she is. He doesn't give two shits. He, he, he knows that there used to be bad blood between their two families, but right now there appears to be a tentative truce between the Bratva and the Italians. And so he's like, hey, where are you headed? And she's like, I'm going to a party at my cousin's house. And uh, Yelena is on a very tight leash. Her father keeps her under his iron fist at all times. She can't go anywhere without his say-so and without being watched. Um, she has little moments of rebellion, like now where she's going to her cousins for to, to hang out but if she drinks he'll find her father will find out about it and she'll pay for it later if she's seen dancing with anyone or making out with anyone or whatever she, she'll pay for it later um Yelena, uh, Yelena is a virgin to her father and subsequently to the Russians in general their their women being virtuous is seen as a like a badge of honor they, they 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 don't have any type of uh what's the word I'm looking for mm, they don't hold their women in high esteem at all their women are nothing but payment in in deals so he's just saving her and her virginity for the right time to sell or trade her for something that is um, to his liking, basically. So, um, Sebastian's like, can I, can I come with you? Because he's bored and he's, he doesn't have anything else better to do. He's not currently living with his father um, at, his, at the family home. He, uh, he's not attending classes anymore at college. Uh, since his basketball career is over and he's kind of aimless. He has gotten more into um, taking over some of the the more shady dealings that Nero used to handle. Nero has moved more into the legitimate side of the South River project. Um, their father is mostly, for the most part, retired. He's still the head of the family and still the face of the family, and he meets with the other uh, dons, or whatever the, you call them, um, 
if there's any kind of like dispute or anything like that, he's still involved in those types of things. But for the most part, he stays sequestered in his, in his house, in the family home. Um, everyone thought that Dante would take over everything. But if you remember Dante's book, at the end of Dante's book, he made a promise to, um, I don't know if it was actually in the book or if it's just implied and stated more plainly after the fact in subsequent books, he made a promise to Simone that he would not, that he would put his family first and he would not in any way jeopardize their son, Henry, and um, their, uh, their daughter, their newly born daughter. Um, so Dante has, is basically um, at the beginning of this book, he is going to uh, meet up with Simone in Paris where they're allegedly going for like a, an extended honeymoon, but everyone believes, everyone in the family believes he's not coming back. Um, so really there is no head of the family at this point to do a lot of the shady shit that Dante and Nero used to handle. So Sebastian is kind of picking up the slack on a lot of that. Um, Nero has, like I said, is picking up a lot of the um, more legitimate side of the business. And so the, a lot of the illegitimate stuff that Dante used to handle and that he used to handle is falling on Seb. Seb is okay with it, but it's not really what he wanted to do with his life. It, he's just, it's just kind of stuck on him. Um, he's really feeling the pressure and he, he's feeling weighed down by everything and it's starting to take its toll and he's he's starting to feel a little bit suffocated so I think when he meets Yelena he feels like she's kind of almost like a like a lifeline so he he grabs on with both hands and um he sees her she's gorgeous she's also extremely tall which he finds very appealing because he's used to dwarfing women. Um, she, in her own right, is like six feet tall. She's like five nine, supermodel, like with no, without shoes. She's like almost six feet. Um, long, snowy white blonde hair. Um, very pale skinned. Very like she. The, he refers to her as like. Uh, like a Valkyrie. She reminds him of a Valkyrie or like an Amazonian type woman. Um, so he, he tags along with her uh, to the cousin's house party. And, you know, he, they're just making idle chit chat. She pretends to not know who he is. Her cousin, however, recognizes him at first he goes, don't I know you? And Sebastian's like, I used to play point guard for whatever team, college team. And he's like, no, that's not it. And, and then he goes, oh, I used to race your brother, drag racing. Um, and Sebastian's like, did you win? And the guy's like, no, he's a tricky fucker. <laughs> and, and Nero. And, um, and Sebastian's like, yeah, that sounds like Nero. And so at that point, like she, Yelena kind of at that point knows who he is, but doesn't make a big deal out of it. Like, oh, oh, our families are in, are, we're enemies. We can't be seen together. Like she doesn't do that. She just kind of like plays it off. Like it's no big deal and that kind of thing. Um, so they start to dance with each other. Um, at one point she pulls him to a quieter area. They go downstairs to like the basement um, of the house where there's a pool table and they start to play pool. They decide to have like a little wager and they start playing strip pool. Each one of them trying to hustle the other. He, he ends up winning and she has to end up stripping down to like her underwear. They have a very sexy little moment. Um, and a kiss that is very, very hot. And then he basically tells her she can put her clothes back on, even though it was at the point where she owed him a couple more articles of clothing that would have left her butt naked. 
Um, but he's very respectful and he doesn't make her do it. And that kind of um, throws her for a loop because she's used to men treating her like trash. And so from that point on, she's like, okay, he's different. She, he's not your typical whatever, right? Um, so he, she lets, she lets him like take her home via, I think like, does he have a car? I don't even remember if it's like an Uber or something, take her home. Um, and she gives him her number and he says he'll, he'll text her, he'll call her, but he doesn't. And she goes inside and she runs into her father and her father is like, well, first, first, before she goes inside, she runs into the guy who was attempting to stuff her into the trunk. And at that point, it's very apparent in the book that it was a setup. And then she runs inside and runs into her dad. And he's like, did everything go according to plan? And she's like, yes. And he goes, okay, good. So we'll wait for him to call. And she's like, okay. And then she goes upstairs and then he doesn't call. And then the dad gets angry and he's like, you must have done something wrong. You're, you're, you're clearly not as appealing as you think you are. Yada, yada. And he just tears her down. Right? So, yeah. So Elena has also has a twin brother, Adrian. Um, growing up, Elena's mother was very meek and timid. She would not actually speak unless forced to speak by her father, um, by, by Elena's father. Uh, and she, unless that, unless she was forced to speak, she would not speak in front of, in front of him. However, behind the scenes, she would speak to the kids and she would like tell them stories and she would read, but she was very mousy. She was clearly extremely afraid of him. When the, when the kids were very young, she just, one day she just disappeared and she was, they were just told that their mother had died. They have no idea if like what happened to their, to their mother. So since that time, they basically lived under their father's, their father's thumb. They're treated differently because obviously, um, Adrian has more value to Alexi than, uh, Yelena does because he's a man and the heir to the Bratva throne. Um, however, you would think that that would make him cleave more to their father and treat her like garbage, but he doesn't. Maybe it's because of their, um, connection as twins, as opposed to just being regular siblings. Maybe he would have like, you know, tossed her to the side, but because they're twins, he has always been her best friend and treated her as if they were two parts of the same person. So he's always tried to um, basically shield her or take the brunt of, of anything that, that their father would try and dish out to her. And so whenever she has a problem or whenever uh, she, she feels like she needs someone to talk to, Adrian is that go-to person for her. Um, after the first meeting with Sebastian, she, and he, and he does not call her, which the, he wants to call her. It's made very apparent that he wants to call her, but he doesn't want to stir up anything between the two families. He, at, at first he's like, I, 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 it doesn't matter. We're at a truce. It should be fine. And then the more he thinks about it and the more he talks to his father about it, which he does have dinner with his dad. And it it's made clear that there's something wrong with his dad. His father's housekeeper, Greta, has been there basically their entire lives growing up. After their mom died when they were younger, um, Greta has basically been their surrogate mother. She's run the household their entire lives, um, cooking, cleaning, doing everything that needed to be done, taking care of their dad as he got older, and just being there for them. 
So low key, Greta tells him, tells Seb that your dad, the doctor's been around and he's given me medication for your dad for his memory, but his memory seems to be coming and going. He's having a hard time remembering things. He's starting to forget um, very simple things that he should be able to remember. And it, it starts to allude that to the fact that maybe he's starting to develop Alzheimer's or dementia or something like that. So he also makes several comments that, that lead, lead me to believe that maybe, that lead you to believe that, that he knows that Dante is not coming back to take over the family and that Nero is not going to be taking over um, as head of the family and that he knows that Sebastian is going to be the one that's going to get stuck with everything. And so he's basically giving Sebastian little pieces of advice and base, basically just saying like, remember, this is our motto. This is what we do. You, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so after speaking with his dad, he starts to think, you know, I, I don't think it would be a good idea for me to call Elena. I don't want to stir up any trouble with, with the Bratva. Um, I'm going to keep my head down. I'm going to do stuff the right way. I don't want to. I just don't, I just don't want to fuck anything up. So he doesn't call, even though he really wants to. So Alexi devises a new plan, plan B. There is a charity auction being held uh, that Callum, that he finds out that Callum, who is alderman of the 51st, 54th district, something. I don't, I can't remember. Um, that Callum and his wife, Ada Gallo, said sister, um, have been invited to, and that Sebastian is being drugged along to. Um, and it's an auction for the glitz and glamour and the rich people of Chicago, right? Um, he finds out about this, and he says, okay, I have an idea. Um, not only are they auctioning off um, timeshares and villas and... Tuscany and yachts and dinners with the president and whatever, whatever the fuck other things rich people schmooze about. Um, they're also auctioning off dates with women, with girls. Um, so basically, the daughters of high society are getting auctioned off for one night dates, single, single dates to the highest bidder. So dinner dates and whatever. Um, so he basically doesn't tell Yelena anything until they get there. And he goes, here, bitch, you're, you're getting auctioned off. Sebastian's gonna be there. And he makes, she puts on like this skin tight red dress, pulls her hair up in a high ponytail, puts on these big gold hoops and she's looking like a knockout bombshell. Like, I just imagine, like, if um, uh, Jessica Rabbit had her hair up in a ponytail, like, that's what I pictured. Just, like, big old, like, swinging boobs. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I don't know why I said that. Swinging boobs. You know? Like, she just looks good, you know? Um, so, she's chatting with, with the other bitches back behind the curtain. And it's like, okay, anything under 10,000, anything over 10, anything, 10,000 is, is the mark that you want to hit. Like that's, whoa, you know, um, anything under a thousand is pathetic. Anything above like 3,000, from like 3,000 to 5,000 is like, eh, sad, but you're okay. Five to 10,000 is the money shot. 10,000 or above, unheard of. Okay. So the girls go out one at a time. They're getting auctioned off. She's the last girl to go out. She goes out. 
She's terrified. Yelena is a, she's a mix of contradictions because some moments she's brash and she's, when it comes to like her father's men, some of them like she mouths off to and she's very sassy with, but I think it's like all the front. Like she has to act tough because she's so, she's so scared of them. With this, her father has one particular henchman who does not speak. They say it's because his tongue was cut out um, by by like a former uh, a former boss, uh, and he leers at her, and it's very apparent that he wants her, but in like a sick way. And so he's always watching her and like skeevily, like just there. And he's like this big hulking brute of a man. And he's just always there. Uh, so some of the men she, she does mouth off to, but with, with this guy, she tries it. But you can tell she doesn't. She's she's terrified of him. So she she's a she's a very contradicting character, but not in like an annoying way, if that makes sense. It's it you can. I think to myself like usually I I would assume Russian women, and maybe that's just me being stereotypical because I'm an ignorant white bitch. Um, I think rush like Russian women as being like fierce and ballsy and take no prisoners feisty type bitches um but then I also think to myself again as a stereotypical like as a, as a stereotypical white ignorant white bitch um I think to myself Russian men are very from what I've read domineering abusive type, you know what I'm saying? Like very uh, like pound your fist on the table type. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Um, you know what I mean? So like you would think with men like that, super domineering, super angry, strengthy men, that their women would be meek, mousy women. So I don't know, maybe. Maybe she is portrayed the way that she's supposed to be. I just, in my mind, I thought that she, I thought as a Russian woman, you should be, you should be braver. But maybe you shouldn't. I don't know. It's so weird. But she's, she's, she's scared of her father. And rightly so. Because he's fucking terrifying. He's, he is, um, Alexei. Yenin as a character is your typical m mafia m mafia boss like he he has no emotions and what little emotion he does show is violence and rage he's cold calculated always 10 steps ahead always sick and sadistic like He's, you can tell he's a, he's like a sadist. Um, so anyway, I forgot where the fuck I was going with this story of my life. Um, so she gets out on the, on the platform and she's, she's, the bright lights are on her and she's terrified because she knows her father is watching and she knows that if she doesn't get Sebastian to bid on her, she's fucked. She's going to go home tonight. Her father's going to beat the shit out of her. So she makes eye contact with him and she's looking at him and he's dumbstruck because he's like, obviously didn't expect her to be there. What the fuck are you doing up there, girl? Like what's happening right now? Immediately, guy across the room bids on her. They start the bidding at, a, I forget. Did they start it at like the minimum at a thousand dollars? Or did they jump straight up to like 5,000? I can't remember. They, they, the bid was high. The bidding, the bidding war ensues. 
immediately. She's she's already at like 10, 10 grand. Sebastian bids on her. The bidding continues to grow. Finally, everybody else drops out besides Sebastian and one other guy. It's like some hedge fund guy. I forget. Um, clearly, there's some bad blood between him and this guy. It's a personal type bidding war. They're going back and forth. And Sebastian lays out this ridiculously high number, like $50,000. And the guy's like, oh, fucking piece of shit. And he folds. And Sebastian wins a date with Yelena. And she just about collapses from relief, obviously. But at the same time, she's like, she's guilt ridden because she on the one hand didn't want him to win because she knows he's a good guy and she doesn't want to, tr she doesn't want to help her father trap him in some kind of crazy shit. Right. Okay. So fast forward a little bit. They go, he comes to pick her up. They go on a date. First, he meets her father. Her father pretends to be congenial as much as he can be while having deadhead eyes. Um, water under the bridge. Let's get along. Let's do whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying? So he picks her up and they go on this date. Um, eventually, he takes her back to his family home. Um, he's very, he's a little bit more open with her than probably I would have been. Because this is the daughter of one of your family's biggest rivals. And you're, you're just freely showing her the in, inner workings of your family's house. And he's very, he's very open and trusting in that way. And maybe some of that is his naivete. Very fancy. Um, and maybe some of it is just, he, he just feels a connection with her and he knows that there's something about her that he, he just, he just knows that he, maybe deep down, he just knows he's going to be with her forever and ever and ever. my romantic heart. Um, but so yeah, so he takes her back to his family home. Uh, there's, there's nobody there. His, his father is like, um, I forget he's at a meeting or something. And I guess Greta has used this opportunity to go out shopping or, or whatever with her free time. He takes her upstairs to, um, to his mother's music room. It was her favorite room in the house. His mother, prior to meeting his dad, was a concert pianist, and she was um, really good. Uh, he has found out that uh, Yelena also plays the piano, and her secret ambition is to compose music, like classical music. Um, so he sits down and he lets her use his mother's piano and lets her play. And he asks her to play, um, he lets her play one of his mother's songs. He just says like, you know, just pick something, play something. And it turns out to be one of his mother's favorite songs. And, uh, then he asks her to play something of hers, something that, that she cho chooses. And then she plays something that she wrote and he loves it. And obviously, you know, they bond over that. So yes, yeah, so after she plays for him on the piano, he plays her on the piano. <laughs> okay, so on some real shit though. He, um, he, he, he 
goes down on her on the piano. On his mom's piano. Which I thought was kind of like. Oh, on, your mom, on your mom's piano. That's like having sex in your parents' bed, bro. It's kind of. Mm, 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 mm. I mean. Mm. But it is what it is. It was hot though. It was hot because it was hot. Um, so that happens. And then over the course of a little bit of the book, they continue to see each other behind, not really behind her dad's back, but kind of behind her dad's back. So he knows that they went on the date. She tells her father that it went well. Her father knows that that there's a thing there and he's glad of it like he he's he wants her to lure Sebastian in right but she downplays the amount of time that they're spending together over the course of the book they spend increasingly more time together they go out on more dates she lies and she says she's here but she's really with him she lies and she says she's there but she's really with him and they're, they're making out and they're doing this and they're kissing and they're doing whatever, right? But they're not having sex because they can't because she's a virgin, right? Okay. Um, now fast forward a little bit more. She's in deep, like deep. She's coming to the realization that she is falling for him. He is already way deep. He's in love with her. She's racked with guilt. But she's terrified of her dad. So. So. They're out one night. She's got terrible anxiety. She's like, I think it's time for me to go home. And he's like, do you have to? Like, I... I want to stay with you. Like I'm, I'm spending time with you. I want to be with you. And she's like, I, I don't feel well. I feel like I need to go home. And he's like, okay, well, um, how about a walk on the beach? Let's 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 go sit down and we'll just we'll just sit on the beach for a while and relax. And she's like, oh, okay, you know. So they go to the beach. They walk to a secluded part of the beach. Secluded part of the. Beach. I think you know where this is going. <laughs> um, they walk to a secluded part of the beach. They're talking. And they start kissing. They have sex. <laughs> um, he takes her virginity on the beach. She, she, he takes her, takes her home. She doesn't want to tell her father that he's that they've had sex. She prays that there's no blood on her because then he'll know. She tries to hide like any kind of evidence. She puts herself back together. She's like, you know, make sure her clothes don't have anything on them. She walks inside. The creepy guy is there. He looks at her. He doesn't say anything, obviously. He's fucking mute and his tongue's missing. He uses like um, his own version of sign language to speak to her father. Uh, he doesn't know that over the years she has picked up on what the sign language means and that she does understand what he's saying um, and that she knows how to speak, like how to communicate with him. She knows the signs. So he doesn't bother using the sign language on her, obviously. Um, so he, he, he looks at her. Something's off about you, girl. So she's like, he's like blocking her path to get upstairs. She's like, get out of my way. He blocks her some more. He boxes her in. She tries to push past him. No, he blocks her in some more. He ends up shoving her back against the wall. He looks down and he sees a spot of, a spot of blood on her dress. 
she starts panicking, she freaks out. He basically puts her in a chokehold against the wall, shoves his hand up her dress, inside her, pulls it back, his hand's covered in blood. He knows that her virginity's been stolen. He lets her go, she runs upstairs. She knows it's only a matter of time before her father knows. A, so she's sitting on pins and needles. A day goes by, nothing happens. Two days goes by, nothing happens. Finally, she's called downstairs to, to dinner with her dad, her and her brother. Her father, basically, at the head of the table, acting super chill, super chill, nothing to learn. It's a trap, it's a trap. He basically tells her, I know what you did. And, um... You tell that gallo boy that he's gonna marry you or there's gonna be a war. And so there's a sit down meeting between him, Alexi Yenin, and um, Daddy Gallo. I forget his name. What the fuck is his first name? Shit. What the fuck is his first name? Um, damn it, I forget. I can't remember now. My brain is trash. I'm sorry. Um, Papa Gallo. <laughs> we'll just call him Papa Gallo. So they meet at a mutual location, which is like, there's like, I think it's like a restaurant um, that's like Switzerland to all the families. There's no violence there. So they meet. Sebastian comes, obviously. Nelena's not invited because she's a woman and she's trash and she doesn't count, right? Um, Adrian is invited. He's pissed. He does not like the fact that his sister is being served up as like a sacrificial lamb. Um, and a contract is signed in blood. An old fashioned, old, like old world con type contract, marriage contract. Um, and so essentially Sebastian and Yelena are going to be married in one month and they'll be, the two families will be bonded in marriage, yada, yada, yada. Cool. All right, cool. Nobody likes this besides Sebastian, obviously. Sebastian is all for it. He wants her forever. He's, he's down. He's like, give, give it to me now. Give it to me now. He's so fucking cute. I love him. Um, so he calls Dante. Sebastian calls Dante. And he's like, are you coming to my wedding? Dante's like, no. What the fuck? And he's like, something's not right about this. It's too easy. You, you steal this girl's virginity and basically deface her in the eyes of her family. And he's just going to hand her over and no, everything's cool and no, something's not right. And I've promised my wife and my family that I'm going to stay out of trouble. I can't just walk into some kind of bullshit. I can't. I'm, I've basically cut ties with all of that family drama, mom, that family drama. I was going to say family, mama drama, <laughs> baby mama drama. Um, so, yeah. So, Sebastian's like, um, all right, that, that hurts. I really wish you would be there to be, like, in my wedding party and stuff and support me. But I understand why you're, why you're not coming. So, he hangs up. Fast forward a month. It's wedding day. They're going to, um, I want to say it's like an Orthodox church or something. The wedding's being held in a church. It's very small. Um, Papa Gallo, uh, Nero, Camille, um, Callum and Ada are not there because I think Callum had something else going on or he can't be seen gallivanting around with these mobsters because he's trying to run for mayor 
or he will be. Um, so it's Sebastian, a couple of his um, lieutenants, like what they call lieutenants, his henchmen um, from the family. Well, not really from the family, but they're like his, his guys. Um, Alexei Yemen, several of his men. Elena, Greta, Greta's there. Um, Adrian, her twin brother. Oh, and Elena's twin brother. And um, I think I think that's it. I think that's pretty much it. It's, it's like it's just the family and like the guards. That's it. And a last minute addition, Dante. Dante shows up, which throws Alexei Yenin for a loop because he didn't expect that. And he looks scared for a second because he was not expecting Dante because Dante is a big hulking T-bone steak. So he looks legit like, oh shit. Okay. Which should have been your first clue. Something about to go down. Right? So, um, she comes, Yelena, Yelena comes out. She doesn't walk down the aisle because they don't do that in, I guess, in this traditional custom. She comes from like behind where the priest stands. She's beautiful. She's beautifully dressed, beautiful gown. They say their vows. They say I do. They kiss. And all hell breaks loose. All of Alexei Yenin's guards, Alexei himself and Adrian pull their guns and start blasting. Um, they basically shoot Papa Gallo in the face like three times. They shoot Nero like six times in the back. Um, Dante gets shot in like the leg and the shoulder, I think, or something like that. They go for Sebastian and Yelena jumps in front of the bullet and takes a bullet in in the side? No, she takes a bullet in the shoulder for him. Um, it's pandemonium. Everybody's shooting. Everybody's, everybody's shooting. Um, one of Sebastian's lieutenants gets shot, gets killed. Their father gets killed. Nero is in critical condition. He make, they, they get him to a hospital. He's in a coma. They don't know if he's going to survive. Dante manages to basically patch himself up in a hotel room, make it out and get out. Um, or like back to the house. I forget where they go. Um, they, they, Greta gets out and gets back to the house. Sebastian manages to get out after um, Yelena gets, basically she passes out from getting shot, obviously. Um, she wakes up and she's in a dank, dark dungeon. She's chained to, the, to a wall by her wrists and ankles a mattress on the floor there's a bucket in the corner for her to use the bathroom and that's it it's like a blanket maybe I don't know pillows you don't need a pillow bush you know no um and she's in a cage basically um so essentially Papa Gallo is dead It has come to light that everything Sebastian thought he knew was a lie. Elena set him up from the beginning, from the very first moment that he saw her being kidnapped and stuffed in a trunk. And she was working with her father the entire time to set him up all to take out his dad and his whole family. His brother may die, Nero. Dante 
Dante's never gonna forgive him because Dante could have died and been taken away from Simone and his kids. So he's pissed, obviously. He feels some kind of way, right? Elena um, is, I think this was the one moment, if I had to say, if there was anything about this book that I, not to say that I didn't like, but that irked me, it may have been this one scenario where I wanted her to get all up in his biz and be like, motherfucker, have you met my dad? Do you have any idea what that hellhole was like for me? I was stuck between a rock and a hard place and I had no choice. What did you expect me to do? I'm sorry that I set you up, but unfortunately it was either that or he shoots me in the face. What, what, what was I supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? But instead she, she was the, the good wife, the good little wife, and she felt genuinely bad about what happened to his dad, obviously, as, as you would, because she had met his father and spent time with his father over that one month period where they were betrothed. <laughs> Such an old fashioned word. When they were betrothed, she, she spent time with his father, played chess with his father, read books with his father, had conversations with his father. And she, she feels terrible. Um, Sebastian comes down to see her and he's a mask of rage and hatred and just, oh God, just, he, he's just, she doesn't see any feeling in him, like any feeling behind his eyes. No hints of the old Sebastian is in there. The, the f fun loving, carefree, playful boy that once was, is gone. The dark, twisted mafioso is here now. And so he's not sure what he's going to do with her, but he's going to use her in some way as leverage against her father. Um, so he devises a plan between him. He, call, he, he knows that Dante is not going to help him. Dante is going to go back to Simone. He can't be involved in this anymore. He just can't. Nero is in the hospital. He's, he's fucked. He's, he's in a coma. He's going through multiple surgeries to try and save his life. He's in the ICU or critical care unit. C what, CCU? Is that it? Okay. Um, Camille's at his bedside 24-7. They also have posted outside of his room arm guards. Like, no one's getting in there, allegedly. Hopefully. Um, he has no backup. He can't go to Callum and Ada because Callum can't get his hands dirty if he has any hope of running for mayor. So he can't even go that route. So he thinks to himself, who do I have? Ding, ding, ding. The Polish Mafia. Nessa Griffin, the youngest Griffin, and Callum's little sister, is currently married to Mikolaj Wilk, the head of the Polish Mafia, who also happens to be a Bratva enemy. So he goes to Mikolaj and he says, hey, um, they massacred my family. I want to get them back. I need to form an alliance with some heavy hitters. 
I need your help. And Miko's like, okay, um, I'll help you. We'll go fuck him up in exchange. I want all the Bradford territory that used to be controlled by the Russians. Um, and any money and loot that we, that we get, we'll split 50-50, et cetera, et cetera. Cool. So while Yelena is being held in the dungeon, Greta is taking care of her. Sebastian is not cruel, so he doesn't tell her, like, oh, keep her in rags. And she's curr She was currently wearing her tattered, bloody wedding dress for a hot minute. But he tells Greta to give her, like, clean clothes and, like, a, 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 uh, to give her, like, a sponge and a basin to wash with and, you know, that kind of thing. And feed her and take care of her, basically. That's still his wife. Um, so he's still underneath. He's still softy. You know? Um, so Greta's taking care of her. Um, so over the course of the next few hours-ish, I'm fuzzy on the timeline. It might have been hours or it might have been a few days. I can't remember. Um, he basically questions her on every single piece of information that she knows about her father's business. And she knows a good bit. Her father didn't bother to hide much from her. He didn't tell her anything because why would he? But he didn't also didn't bother to hide much from her because she's just a woman and she's stupid and, and inconsequential. She's like a painting on the wall. She's an ornament. She's just there. You know what I mean? She's a piece of furniture. So she knows quite a bit. So she starts telling him about her father's businesses and where they're located and how much cash they pull in and she's giving him all the information that she can to help him because she loathes her father and she wants to make amends for what happened to his dad. So he start, him and Miko start devising a plan to hit three, threefold. They're gonna divide up the, the men they have and they're going to hit three different places simultaneously to basically deplete his, uh, her father of like all of his holdings, his cash, everything he has, and make him destitute and basically call him out or draw, draw him out so that he can, they can kill him. So Sebastian and Miko devised this plan that they're going to hit him at these three cash operations and deplete him of all, his, all of his funds. In the downtime between devising the plan and executing the plan, all of the hate and rage and anguish and guilt and emotion that Sebastian has been bottling up is manifesting itself and it needs an outlet. And he decides that he needs to see Elena, even though he's told himself he's not gonna go back and he's not gonna talk to her and he's not gonna, he's gotten all the information that he needs from her. He's not gonna go back. He needs to, but he decides he has to see her again. He goes back. And he sees her, and all of that just comes pouring out. And the result is the most I can taste it. <laughs> The most, the most prolonged, graphic, sexually explicit, dungeon sex scene <laughs> that I have read in a hot minute. Baby Seb is no longer a baby. He is now Daddy Seb. He is, he is literally an animal. Like, he, he just goes full on, just full on caveman on her. And she's like, do what you gotta do. At first, 
she's at, at first at, towards the middle towards the middle part of, of this scene towards the middle part of this scene there's a point where he does something that she's like no 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 and then it's it's almost like it's a test and he's like if you want me to stop all you have to do is say no do you want me to stop and then she's like it, it's almost like testing herself as well and she's like no keep going and he does and if you're not if you're not if you're just to warn you if you haven't gotten up to this point yet this is the first foray into anal sex to date in this series so be be prepared for that if you're not ready for that get ready um so yeah so that was um that was something and I wrote, <laughs> I'm going to cover up this little bit because I haven't gotten to this in the, I haven't, I haven't, oh, God damn it. I haven't gotten to either of these things yet in the room, but I literally wrote, I literally wrote dungeon sex <laughs> in all caps. So, yeah. So he releases all of his frustrations out on her and then they sleep together on her little dingy mattress in the, in the corner. Um, he gets up the next morning and, or, or like wherever it, it, they do this throughout the entire night, by the way, like he's, he's clearly got some staying power. Okay. Um, he, he gets up the next morning and he leaves before she wakes up. She, on the other hand, has also devised a little escape plan of her own. She has come to the realization that, um, that Sebastian, in addition to killing her father, she knows that Sebastian is also has plans to kill her brother, Adrian. And even though Adrian was in on the shooting that happened, that's still her brother and her best friend from her, like the only person who's ever meant anything to her in her life. So if she can try and get, get Sebastian to spare him, she needs to. So she's been torn on whether or not to try and get out of the dungeon secretly. Finally, so she, she needs to, ha she needs to try and have a plan just in case. So she takes one of the plates that um, Greta has been bringing her food on. And just like a lot of other uh, dishes, if you notice, if you turn it on upside down, there's usually like a sticker of some kind with the manufacturer's information underneath. She peels the sticker off. And then when one day, like when Greta, the day that, that she needs to make her escape after the next morning when Sebastian leaves, she, which is the day that all of this is going, this is going down and Sebastian and Miko are executing their plan. She decides that she has to get out of there and she has to try and go find Adrian. She, she calls, she waits for Greta to come down and bring her something to eat. It's a bowl of soup and sandwich. She accidentally spills the soup. In her attempt to try and, and get a rag um, from, across the, from across the cell, she darts over and is like, oh, let me help you and tries to, and grabs the rag. While she's doing that, she places the sticker over the magnetic lock of the, because they're very, um, that's what I'm looking for. They're very uh, high tech in this dungeon. <laughs> um, she places the sticker over the magnetic lock for the dungeon, for the cell door. Um, and then when Greta leaves, after they've cleaned up the mess, when Greta leaves, the door closes, but it doesn't lock. The lock doesn't click into place. So she escapes the house. So she gets out and she goes looking for Adrian. Luckily, she finds one of the gallow cars underneath the thing, underneath the garage. And she drives out to her father's house. She low-key 
follows um, uh, Rodian, the scary guy, the scary guard, and Adrian come out of her father's um, gated compound. So she follows them at a distance and she sees them pull out, um, pull in front of a building that she doesn't really recognize. And she sees Rodian get out and Adrian stays in the car. She's getting ready to get out and approach Adrian. Um, and then he starts to pull away from the curb. She's getting ready to follow him, but then she sees where Rodian is heading. He's heading down an alley that is directly, um, on one side there's um, like an office building and on the other side there is like um, what appears to be like an urgent care center or like a, or a hospital. It turns out to be the hospital where Nero Gallo is. So now she's torn, do I go after my brother? or do I see, do I try and stop Rodian from whatever it is that he's about to do, which is clearly trying to finish the job of killing Nero. She has to try and save Seb's brother. So she fucks off Adrian and she gets out of the car and she follows down the alley where Rodian went. She looks down the alley, she doesn't see him. She looks up and she sees him going up the fire escape of the opposite building. He's heading to the roof of the other building. She, Clots very stealthily, very quietly, starts following him up the fire escape. She makes it to the roof and she realizes that he has a rifle and a clear line of sight through the window into Nero Gallo's hospital room and that he's going to basically assassinate him in his bed. Um, she tries to sneak up on him. She's literally inches away from braining him with something. And he hears her and turns around and there's like a glancing blow and she narrowly like grazes him. There's an ensuing scuffle. He has her by the throat and is dangling her over the side of, of the, um, the building. Uh, she use she in a desperate bid to get her get him to release her so that she can make a play for his gun. She uses the sign language that he uses to talk to her father. And she starts signing that she has a message from her father. He at first he's surprised because he doesn't know that she even knows these symbols. And then he's confused. I'm like he's suspicious, but he's like Okay, maybe she does have something. Yeah. So he, he eases up just enough to pull her back over the ledge. And I think either she like knees him in the balls or something. She, she, she manages to get away. She grabs the gun and she shoots him. Like, yeah. And then she basically pushes him. Does she shoot him? Anyway, she pushes, she basically pushes him over the side of the building and he falls and, and dies. Hit, he hits the street like a fucking pancake. Splat. Okay. Um, so after that, she's, she climbs her way down the fire escape, even though she's terrified of heights, which by the way, I forgot to mention that she's also terrified of heights. Um, and she goes and finds Ada. She doesn't have anywhere else to turn. She, she doesn't know where else to go. She finds Ada. Ada recognizes her. She, Ada doesn't blame her for her dad's death. She says they've got to be going back to the house. Um, in the meantime, they hit all of his stuff and they, then they call him and they go, Hey, like Sebastian goes, Hey, it's me. You know, that guy you tried to kill that, that guy whose family you tried to kill. Um, I've taken all your shit. All your clubs have been shut down. They're now under my control. Um, all of your, um, windmill thingies that you had out in the desert or wherever. Um, 
they're, they're mine now. I blew them up. They're, they're, they're all blown up. You're not going to be getting any money from the government on, from those or whatever. Um, we've hacked into all of your bank accounts and we, we've taken all your money. Everything is mine. Uh, why don't you meet me somewhere and we can settle this like gentlemen? Because you, you broke a blood contract. And that has consequences. Like, you, you, you fucked up. Why don't we meet somewhere and settle this like men? Just you and me. And Alexi goes, okay, let's meet at this location. And he throws him out some weird location. And he goes, okay, we'll meet, we'll meet you there in a few hours or whenever. And they hang up. And Sebastian goes, we're not going there. He's not going there. He's going to come to my house. He's going to come to my house. He thinks we're going to go there. And in the meantime, he's going to try and hit me where it hurts. He's going to come to my family home, and he's going to try and fuck up all my stuff. And when he does, we're going to be there waiting for him. So she goes back to the house, and she sees that uh, Sebastian has captured her brother. Her brother is basically being held, tied up to a chair in Sebastian's house. Her father shows up and is like, I thought we were meeting at this point. A sarcastic piece of shit. Um, Sebastian is thinking to himself, where's Rodian? Like, Alexi wouldn't go far from his henchman. He doesn't know that Yelena has killed him, right? Um, so, uh, essentially all hell breaks loose again, and the Gallo house gets burned to the ground. Um, Miko and his right-hand man, Marcel, makes it, makes it out, which is good because I liked both. I, Miko's my baby. If anything ever happened to Miko, I would literally die. I liked Marcel as well, so I'm glad he survived. Um, Seb makes it out. Elena makes it out. Adrian makes it out, but is extremely badly burned. Um, Sebastian lets him live for Elena. At this point, Sebastian has forgiven her. He loves her. He, he wants to be with her. Um, and yeah, o Alexi, Yenin basically uh, gets 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 offed. Um, all of his men get offed, and and and, and climax, and then cur curtain close. That's that's that on that. They all make a very quick getaway. Um, I want to say Ada and Callum also show up at the end to help with that situation. So, um. The end. Prologue. Prologue? Epilogue. <laughs> so, um, Adrian gets taken to the hospital. Adrian has always been very vain about his looks. Now he's extremely disfigured. He's burned all over his face. Um, he becomes a recluse. Even though Elena reaches out to him numerous times, he refuses to speak with her. He refuses to see her. She's very bereft about it, very upset about it. Um, she tries many times over the, the ensuing years, and he won't have anything to do with her. I think he's secretly fostering his hatred over the course of the next 18 years. Um, and that the next generation is going to pay the price for that. Um, which we will see in the, the Kingmakers because the epilogue of this book uh, basically leads into the next series with uh, Yelena coming home to find a letter from Kingmakers Acad Kingmaker Academy, Kingmaker Kingmakers Academy. Um, an acceptance letter 
for their her and Sebastian's son, Leo, basically saying that he's been accepted to the Academy and that term starts on blah, blah, blah date. Once he's been, once he is there, he cannot leave the, the property for any reason, et cetera, et cetera. Um, violence of any kind will not be tolerated. Any violence will be met out in kind. Any death will be met out in kind. Um, blah, blah, blah. Influential, you, you're accepted as a legacy because influential families, blah, blah, blah. blah. Other influential families will be there. Rah, rah. Um, she gets pissed off. She clearly knows what this ca this academy is. She goes into the study, sees Sebastian there, flips out on him. What the fuck is this? And he's like, well, clearly Leo applied to the academy. And she's like, he's not going. And he, Sebastian's very chill. And he's like, well, he's 18. We can't stop him. And she's like why are you so calm about this? You know what they do with this place. Like, you know what kind of place this is. And he says that, he alludes to the fact that Leo is only going because Anna is going. Anna is Nessa and Miko's daughter, whom it leads us to believe Leo may or may not be infatu infatuated or in love with. Um, it, it, it leads us to believe also that he's going to protect her from, uh, Dean, who is Adrian's son. Adrian formed a bond with the nurse who took care of him in the burn unit. And even though he became a recluse and he moved back to Russia after he was released from the hospital, he married the nurse or he, he stayed with that nurse and then had a child who is now 18 and who is also going to Kingmakers. And so the next generation will be attending this academy and the, the next series of books will be about them. So, on to the next. I'm super excited. I'm so fucking hyped, y'all. However, uh, I will say that, um, I'm terrified that I'm never going to finish these books because none of them are available in audio. And the first book alone, I looked it up on Amazon, which we know is a, is a lie, but usually they're not off by very many pages. And it says that the first book alone is like 530 something pages. Do you know how long it will take me to read even one 500 page book? Like two months. So, see you, see you next year, kiddos. <laughs> anyway, um, for the rating for this book, uh, for the rating for this book, I gave it a 9.75 because I liked this book better than the first book and better than Nero's book but not as much as Miko and Dante's book, which I gave tens to. So does that make sense? The, the other two I gave 9.5, so I have to give Baby Seb a 9.75. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, would I recommend this book or this series to anyone? Stop fucking asking me that. Of course I would. I know you're not really asking me that. I'm asking myself that, but stop. Of course I would. Um, and yeah. I would highly recommend that you guys pick up this series. It's fucking phenomenal. Sophie Lark has quickly become one of my favorite authors ever. I'm chomping at the bit to get into Kingmakers. I can't. Where's my acceptance letter? Fucking put me on the list. Sign me up. I want in. I want in. Okay. Um, if you enjoyed this video. If you like me and you like my channel, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it insert thirsty emoji. Um, if you, if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications when I upload a new video. I upload at least once a week, usually on Thursdays. Um, if you would like, you can follow me on social media. I do have a members only Facebook group an Instagram and a Twitter devoted to this channel. I will link everything in the description box below and I'll put a little banner here on the screen for you guys to see. 
Um, and yeah, uh, I would highly suggest that you guys pick up this book. I really enjoyed it. I would really suggest that you guys read this series. If you do choose to read this series, make sure you start at the very beginning because you know I'm fucking stickler about that. Um, With Brutal Prince is the first book in the series. It's phenomenal. You will not be disappointed. If you like mafia romance, this fucking series is a bee's knees, okay? Um, and yeah, I really appreciate you guys sticking around for now. If you're still here, dear God, you either have no life or you're so devoted to me that you've lost your goddamn mind. I don't know if I should thank you or question your sanity. Like it, it literally, it makes me worry about you. <laughs> it really does. Like it really does. Because I just, I just thought to myself, oh my God, this video is going to be two hours long. That's longer than a full length feature film. What person in their right mind is going to sit down and watch me for two hours? No one, absolutely no one. And if, if you're, if you're doing that, there's something wrong with you. I'm just saying, um, talk to somebody. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I, I guess I'll, I'll see you my, I'll see you next time. <laughs> I'll see you, I'll see you in my next video. I love you guys so much. I don't want to frighten Freckles too much because I don't want him to like get up and start moving around and fuck up all my stuff. So like, <laughs> uh, but this look, y'all, oh, this. Oh, baby Seb, who's no longer a baby. Okay. Like, oh baby, you grew up. You grew up too fast, baby. I'm getting lip gloss all over my cup. I feel weird the way I have to drink this to try and not get lip gloss on my, it's like. Okay, that was weird. And inappropriate looking, okay. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. Let me change my angle a little bit because I'm really fucking off and I don't know what's up. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Candace, you've had the same hair color for like two months. This might be the longest that I've kept a hair color in eons. I know, I don't know why. Lack of motivation. I don't wanna say, okay, I use changing my hair color as like a coping mechanism for um, staving off mental breakdowns. And anytime I do anything drastic to my hair, you know that it's because I was on the verge of having like a full blown meltdown about something or other. Also, look at my nails. I, I've been picking at like the polish, clearly. Ignore that. Um, so when you see like two or three videos in black color, and then you see, bam, red hair. Something happened in between those two videos that caused that. It could have been something as simple as like a buildup of anxiety. It, it could have been something like, Richard, I told you to stop leaving all these cabinet, kitchen cabinet doors open. And I walked into the kitchen and there's two cabinet doors open. And my brain went, and I had to color my hair. Could have been that. Could have been something drastic. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what, 
Anyway, you, you get you get the gist. But I don't know if it's just laziness. Like, I just don't want to color my hair. Or maybe it's just like this color seems to be as close to what I think would be maybe my favorite color. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just tired. Maybe my soul is just tired. Could that be a thing? I think that's a thing. Anyway, hi. <laughs> Three minutes worth of absolute nonsense. Okay, anyway, we're gonna get into it because because we gotta we gotta talk about this. We gotta talk about this dungeon six. <laughs> yes, yes there is. Okay. Um, their women being virtuous is seen as like, um, okay, let's try this again because <laughs> you'll never believe this. You'll never believe this. I ran out of storage. I know, I know. <laughs> Sarcasm much? Okay. Um. So, yes, so, um, so after she plays him, for him on the piano, what, what's, what's, what's this? What is this bullshit? Has that been there the whole time and you didn't tell me? How could you? How could you betray me in such a way? You're gonna, you're gonna get it. Um, okay. It has taken me two and a half hours to record this one hour video because I've had to stop 47 times. Enzo Gallo, motherfucker. That was his name. <laughs> this is how my brain works, y'all. What was his name? What was his name? What was his name? I can't remember his name. God damn it, what was his name? Fuck, what was his name? Four hours later, in the middle of doing the laundry. Enzo Gallo! <laughs> I was about to say, damn, I scared him and, and now he's finished. I can get back to the no. no. Well, at least I don't look like a fucking ghost today. My last video, I think it was the eyeshadow because my last video, I don't know what happened. I looked absolutely terrible. I looked so pale and washed out. Also, side note, I think I'm gonna get rid of this because something about like this green and yellow bullshit back here is like, mm -mm, it's not doing it for me. I, I don't know why. I think I'm gonna go back to the um, the foresty green that I had before. Not before this one because that purple pastel bullshit with the unicorns was not me either. The one before that one because I just can't. I can't do this this yellow snot colored shit. Freckles, like you're in here for 24 hours a day. Could you not drink water the other 23 hours a day that I'm not in here? Anybody looking to get a rabbit? some stuff I wanted to talk to you guys about and I forget what it was oh I've I've decided I think once I'm I'm setting an arbitrary because it is arbitrary because I make the rules I make the rules up in this bitch I'm setting an arbitrary timeline for myself once I am at least 
two books into her Kingmaker series, I've decided I'm going to I'm going to feel as if I know enough about Sophie as a person. We have a connection, we have a deep and meaningful connection with each other that I feel comfortable enough to defend her against all of those one star leaving motherfuckers and I'm going to do my five star rant for your one star review Sophie Lark edition video. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Because I know. I just know. Because of this because of what Sophie writes, because it's considered like some of it is considered dark romance and some and it's ma and some of it's mafia romance and I know there's going to be so many stupid people out there who are going to be like oh I'm so depraved oh it's so good. I know I know it's going to be so there's I can't wait I can't I'm praying that I find like those gems in there that are just so stupid that they're hilarious. I pray I find at least a handful of those because, oh God, I live for those. I'm also thinking of like, because I have to do at least, I have to do one in every video of an outlandish death scenario for, for, the per, for at least one reviewer. And I'm thinking, like, how can I murder you in a really bizarre way? I'm coming for you. I'm coming. For, you've been warned. You've been put on notice. I'm coming for your ass. Okay. So. Oh, my God. I ran out of space again. Okay. Something's got to be done. Something's got to be done. I know I say that every video, but something's got to be done for real. Okay. So that's it. We're done. We're done with this review. I've said everything I need to say. I've reapplied my lip gloss twice, which means that this review has been going on for too goddamn long. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can you, um, can you, can you? I forgot to tell you guys about um, Nessa being pregnant. I forgot to tell you about um, Yelena getting pregnant at the end. I forgot. I forgot a bunch of stuff. How did I forget a bunch of stuff and yet I still managed to make the review two hours? How? How? Okay. How? Anyway, that thing that I alluded to at the beginning that I'm working on is a tattoo design. A Sophie Lark inspired tattoo design. I'm going to do, I'm, I'm working on a tattoo design for, um, Right now, um, I'm in the stage of rage because I can't get it to look the way that I want it to. Nessa looks fucking stunning. Miko is pissing me off. I can't get his um, placement the way I want it. And there's still some bits and bobs in the background that I, that I want to add in. And maybe even a few things I want to change, but I'm not sure yet. And it's it's getting there, but it's not there. So when it's there, you'll know because I'll announce it to the world on Instagram. Okay. <clears throat> There'll be plenty of bloopers because I fucked up a whole bunch. I love you guys and I'll see you later.